independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. As we get into February, March, and April, we're going to see an escalation of availability of doses that we may not have had a week or two or three ago. Dr. Fauci there. Yes, doses. People want to know, when are we going to get our life back? When are we going to get our butts out there and start working again? When are we going to get to this point where we can start to feel like we have some normality? And that's going to come with vaccines. Vaccines right now are the things that's top of everybody's mind. There's two things. Getting through this coronavirus and, yes, the economy. Unemployment numbers. 847,000 workers sought unemployment benefits for the first time last week, a bit of a drop from the prior week, but still at a historically high level. While the virus rages, the economy cannot recover. Business restrictions to slow the infection rate hurt especially the hospitality and food service industries. Overall, the economy grew 1% in the final three months of 2020. Yeah, that was not good at all. So how do we get back? Simple. Herd immunity, getting ourselves back out there. That's it. Period, case closed, end of story. There is no, there's no other way. Some people are doing fine. And I try to, I always talk about, you know, remember 80% of people, 75 to 80% of people are still working. Their lives, while have been affected, some maybe with health, uh, maybe they've lost a loved one, uh, they're, they're still working. But we have a huge part of the population that not only is not working, now some because of schools, things of that, they've had to drop out altogether. They've got to take care of the children. Disproportionately have hurt women in particular because usually they're the primary caregiver in a household. So, yeah, there is a lot that we have to start moving towards. But first and foremost, we get there by getting vaccinated. It's that simple. It's that simple. And for me, because I get a lot of people say, Chad, are you you going to get vaccinated? I'm like, yeah, when when, when, when I'm, you know, when it's my time to get vaccinated, I have no problem doing it. Now, I talk to my doctor. My doctor's like, look, you've you've had it. You test positive for the antibodies. Uh, You can push yourself back a few months. Don't 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 be overly like I got to get it today because of. But when it's your time, yeah, if you want to, no problem. We still don't know a few things. How long does it last, the vaccination? How long does the antibodies last once you've caught it? If you caught the the first strain or the second strain, whatever strain we're on, but now you got the South African strain, the UK strain, if all these other strains, uh, are you susceptible to that? If, If you do catch it, does having the first strain give you some sort of help to overcome that i mean these are all the things that we that we're going to have to to deal with and that the doctors don't really know but it is going to take a few months i've always said the end of summer will probably be when we get back to a place where a majority of the country is going to feel better about where we were compared to last year where we're outside enjoying our lives that you don't see as many people masked up some people are going to the part of this too is the psychological aspect of it. It's like what we talk about with masks, right? The psychological aspect. There are still going to be people out there that are going to be masked up, super double, triple masks. Now that, that's one of the things they're talking about now, right? Like, should we wear two masks? We're thinking about better uh, masks, like surgical masks or N95 masks if they're available. So yes, we should be considering improving the quality of our masks. And if we can't, then this concept of double masking makes a lot of sense. I saw somebody say triple masking for the love of sweet God. So wait a minute. I saw a great meme yesterday. And yes, I mean, you know, it's funny on the surface and we could break down all kinds of things because that's what happens. People go, oh, yeah, that's true. But it was very kind of like made me laugh. Uh, My buddy said it to me. (laughs) He said, wait a minute. A year ago, you wanted us to stay inside to curb the spread for two months. A year later, you're asking us now to wear two masks. Yeah, that's that's it. Now, not everybody's that way. Dr. Richard Besser, former CDC director, uh, smart guy, he, he, he'll tell you right now, nah, no, no double mask. 
Uh, I'm not a double masker. I, I am a big pusher for everyone to wear one mask uh, and, to, and to please not wear it down on your chin. If it doesn't cover your nose and your mouth, it's not going to be effective. I'm looking forward soon to the CDC issuing guidance around uh, the masks that we purchase, rating them in the way that they do for masks uh, among healthcare workers, because that'll give us a better sense as to which masks are, are the right way to go. Yeah. Do you think they're going to rate the ones that you're, you're wearing and I'm wearing? So what am I wearing? Let's talk about it. What are you wearing, Chad? Today I have a, a Cardinals mask because our promotions guy here at the station that I do my local show at, uh, he had hundreds of Cardinals masks brought to you by, I believe it's uh, Seat Geek. So I've got some of those. Uh, and that one, I've got like four or five of them. I wash them maybe once a week. I rotate through them. But do I think for a second that they're, they're not an N95? I've also got one in the car that uh, I like. That's it. It's it's got ninjas on it. <laughs> do I think? Do I think that it, no? A lot of it's about yes. If it can cut down some stuff, great. But for all intents and purposes, for a lot of people, it's a placebo effect. It makes people feel good, but there's a psychological effect. I think even when we get to a point where we get past this, some people have been so just absolutely hit across the face with this and have dived so deep into it and have such a fear of it that psychologically that thing's going to stick with them for a long time. They're going to be wearing masks all the time. They're going to be for every door handle potentially is the end of their life. Common sense, wash your hands, do a little social distancing. And if you see 50 people in the room, you don't know any of them, and none of them, you think, I don't know if any of these people have been vaccinated, don't know them, it's a really small room, there's no way to separate, I feel uncomfortable, go with that. It's that simple. But this is going to take several months. And until we get one where all doctors and little pharmacies and big pharmacies can deliver to us, this is going to take a while for us to get out of in the way that we want to get out of where we're seeing movies, we're going to restaurants. I have not been to, I was thinking about yesterday. The last time I went to a restaurant, this is, this is sad, but, but, but also fun because I was with the kids. I went to Chuck E. Cheese a year ago. That's the last time I was in San Diego with my son, the whole family. We went to Chuck E. Cheese. It was busy. Remember we had had maybe a few cases. It was big in Europe and it happened obviously in China. But they really hadn't. But I went to Chuck E. Cheese. I took Jack and and the kids. We all went to Chuck E. Cheese, and and that was the last time I was in San Diego. And I spent my weekends with him. And since then, we've been rotating back and forth. We'll come out for a few weeks, go back there. But that was the last time I was in a restaurant, dining. I've dr- I've driven through. Yeah, I miss doing that. I think we all do. So it's time for us to say, hey, it's coming. We're going to get there, get your vaccine if you feel comfortable. If you don't, understand the risk. And that's the other thing, understanding the risk. We have taken people's common sense and we've taken their responsibility away from them because we want to dictate what you can and can't do and what you should and shouldn't do when it comes to these things. You'll know what the risk is. And if you're you're good to live with it and potentially get sick, that's a you thing. But we're going to get there. But it's going to take time. And along the way, the economy is still going to be bumpy. Because even though certain states are opening up again, mostly because they're afraid of recalls, California looking at you, even though those things are happening, in reality, so much damage has been done that it's going to take a long time for some of those small businesses, not talking about the large corporations, those small to medium-sized businesses to get themselves back on their feet. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Hope you guys had a phenomenal day yesterday. I was thinking, Cloris Leachman died yesterday. And here's my thing, you know, so if you guys don't know who Cloris Leachman is, she was beyond a hell of an actress. Really, This was a woman who was ridiculously talented. She was a woman who was absolutely a star in her day. And we didn't realize she has eight Emmys. Her and Dewey Lewis Drivers, they have the most Emmys. 
So Julia Lewis Dreyfus has eight. So did Cloris Leachman. She has an Oscar. People don't realize that because we, you know, over the years she kind of did so many other things and didn't get the same love that somebody like Betty White has gotten. She always had fun with with Betty White, but God, I loved her in Young Frankenstein. I am Frau Blucher. After you, Frau Blucher. She was just, and of course, you know, the thing that really made her was Mary Tyler Moore. I mean, the fact is, she was she was so big. She was 94. But I said yesterday, people got mad at me, because normally here on our show, if we joke around about somebody, I said, you think Betty White is as nervous as a, as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs? And everybody's like, oh, my God, I can't. I'm like, she's fine. She's 99. She's in good health. She's in good health. She is. She's going to make it to 100. I, no, all bets are off after that, though. But, man, I love Cloris Leachman. She was, uh, she was just, she was a hell of an actress. And the latter years, people look at her and they're like, she wasn't, she, she braced her age. It was like, she didn't try to do anything. Like, this is who I am. But if you go back and look at her younger years, she was beautiful. She was. And she got an Academy Award. We just, you don't even think, oh, she, she won an Academy Award. Yeah, for the last picture show. She won an Academy Award. She won Emmy. She won all kinds of things. I don't think people put her in that kind of category of somebody of that kind of talent. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the show. The big versus the little. David versus Goliath. The story that people are trying to figure out, okay, what exactly is it? How is it working? We're going to break it down for you. A bunch of underdog guys and gals on the interwebs taking on the hedge funds and battling it out, oh, yeah, it's the GameStop battle. Talk about it. It's the Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. It's less likely that the children who are in the school, if we do things right, it's less likely that they're going to get infected. So the science tells us that there's something leaning towards all the things that we need to do. Yeah. And you're seeing teachers, and again, this goes back to getting through this thing and part of having this normalcy, normality, whatever you – when you say normality, Chad, it's normalcy. You can do both. Settle down. Part of back to this normality is the fact that once we can get kids back in school, first, it, the mental health side of it is huge, not just for the kids, by the way. If you're home with kids all day, you realize you're not supposed to be around kids all day. It's like relationships. Like, we're great in 12-hour stretches. We've been at home 300-plus days together, 24-7. Our relationship should not be like that. But it's the same thing for the kids. But as I looked over that study from Wisconsin that, you know, uh, claimed the guy is the White House, you know, chief of staff, says, well, you know, the study was rural and it was all these things. One of the things I noticed is... The protection that they did for the teachers as far as the room. They still had to fight the kids to get their masks on. I mean, they're kids, for God's sakes. Jeez. About 10 or so years old, they're okay with wearing the mask. Under the, You know, really, up to like 6 or 7, good luck, right? Like, good luck. And they still have accidents. So, you know, good luck with that. But it was also the classrooms. And as I've talked to teachers here in Arizona and nationwide, they all say the same thing. A lot of younger teachers, especially, they're fine going back. Some of the older teachers, they really want to get back. They're okay. Their fear isn't whether or not they can, you know, play mask police. They go, it's just another thing that we have to do. The the frustration and fear is nothing's going to get cleaned the way it should. The inside of the classroom without the children will not be taken care of. And that's what a lot of teachers are upset about. I get that. And I understand that. My little brother goes to a private school. So one goes to public school and 
It's a mess. And he, the whole thing is, and we've talked a bit about him, Elijah. I love him to death, but a lot of problems. But my mom put the other one in school, a private school, and they do everything like you could not believe. They've not had an outbreak. They've not had one kid the entire year come down with COVID. Not from school. A couple of kids have got it when they went on vacation and stuff like that, but from school, no. Every night the rooms are cleaned. Big time. They have a dog that goes throughout the day sniffing and doing sort of it, it's they have it on blast. They know exactly what they're doing. And I think part of getting through this, the psychological part, is understanding, okay, I, I've done everything I could. I can't do it all. But this is it. And sometimes that's what you have to live with. But I think when it comes to a lot of public schools, just don't do that. And I've asked a couple of teachers, like, how hard is it? How hard is it to hire a special cleaning crew? Well, budget, this, that, and the other. I'm like, we waste enough stuff on a bunch of other stuff. You can't tell me you can't find cleaning clues, uh, uh, crews of two and four people then come through and sweep a school on a nightly basis? You don't think that that – and that alone would give confidence besides the masking and everything else. It's not going to be perfect, but at the end of the day, it's still nature. And as we always say, right, Producer Phil, what will nature do to you? Nature will mess you up. Mess you up. Yes, nature can still mess you up. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try to prevent something, it still may get you. And some people may run into the teeth of it and nothing happens to them. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Love hearing from every single one of you. It is absolutely an amazing story about the little guy, the retail guy, the democratization of investing and trading versus the fat cats on Wall Street. The hedge fund people. And it is very interesting. We're going to talk about it. GameStop, AMC, companies that are struggling, all of a sudden have become, well, the must-watch stock. Why is it? Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. If you are one of those people who've spent the last 10 months of your life locked away in your house, hiding away from other people, wearing masks every time you go out in public, letting what the government and the media say about the virus dictate your entire life, putting your life on hold for this thing, if that's you, you are quite possibly the reason why somebody still has their mother and father today. What? You're probably the reason why somebody's grandma or grandpa is still alive. And despite what anybody else may tell you, that doesn't make you a sheep. That doesn't mean you're weak or you're scared or living in fear. That means you're awesome. <laughs> means you're super. God. If you let everybody dictate your life, but then everybody's safe, you're awesome. You're not a sheep. Yeah, you kind of are. <laughs> look, it's okay to have respect for people. Wear a mask. Give them sick. You know, I look. Do you want me to wear a mask in your store? Fantastic. I'll wear a mask. I'm not, I'm not here. You're not taking away your rights yet? No. That, they've asked me to do it. I'm going to stay. Do you, are you staying in your house? Quite frankly, your mother and father. You can say that about everything. Do all of you stay in your house? Well, guess what? Nobody dies from an accident in a car. There's no plane crashes. There's no, I mean, that's, but hey, solid. Solid. Can't believe that. That, that to me is just nuts. So what is it? It is the little guy and gal, right? little person, if you will, against the big person. 
against the evil behemoth. When we talk about, like when Bernie Sanders sets up things about the us versus them, the eat the rich kind of thing, the the one percenters, who is it? It's an old guy in suspenders and he's white and he's smoking a cigar and around him is a bunch of Patrick Bateman type, right? All talking about their ivory business cards and oh, that's who it is, right? And they're all on Wall Street. They're the fat cats. They're the man. They're hedge funds. And the little guy was a little guy. The little guy never had a chance. He's never had a chance. Well, now, little guy, the democratization of, of, of all of these businesses, the beauty of capitalism is it finds a way. Sounds very much like Jeff Goldblum, right? When it, when it was, a, what was that movie, Jurassic Park? Nature always finds, a, same thing with capitalism, always finds a way. Through things like Acorn and Robin Hood in particular, what happens is people have access to things they've never had before. Even when day trading was big in the 90s, it wasn't like this now. The things that you get, you don't have to go to a specific place. You can do things now like you've never done before and have access you've never had before, and you could do it on a quick basis. Now, you take that and you couple it with the Internet, bringing people together, creating opportunities to do things, especially in a world where sometimes it's about hedging bets and going up against the big guy. And that's what's happened with GameStop and Reddit. The Internet takes on Wall Street. The stock price for GameStop has been surging more than 600 percent. But it's the reason that this is happening that has everyone's jaws on the floor. I mean, it's being sort of billed by the people who are doing it as a David versus Goliath thing, right? So you have this army of small traders who are using a Reddit message board called Wall Street Bets, and they're putting pressure on the short sellers of GameStop. GameStop is a company that's not expected to make money this year. It's closing a lot of stores. It's had some trouble trying to restructure here. This Internet army made it a cause celeb and has driven the stock from like $17, $18 at the beginning of the year to my last count was three hundred. Two dollars right now. GameStop wild swings at this moment. Three forty-seven. It's going to swing throughout the day. It's dropped down to two sixty-nine at one time. It's and and it's up. It's down. So what happens? Well, first of all, let's. I'm going to I'm going to try to keep it as simple as stupid as possible because it's confusing. Because the people that are running Wall Street bets, they understand. It. This is what there there are more sophisticated people. Chances are. It, 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 you know, and some people are saying there's a bunch of other bigger money behind some of these people and they're going up and use helping the little people get their taste. But essentially what it is, is you can see who who what's going on in, in certain marketplace, who's holding positions. So this is a short squeeze. So what happens is big funds, hedge funds, they go and they borrow stocks from somebody. Hey, can I borrow your stock? Yeah, sure. And they take that stock and they they sell the stock. They collect the money for the stock. The goal is the stock eventually drops. You're still holding on to that money you got in. Then you buy that stock back at a cheaper price. You made the money in between and you give your stock back with a small fee to the person you borrowed the stock from. It's a short thing. And it's based on fundamentals and technicals. You look at some of the technicals. A lot of it's fundamentals. What's going on? They're not going to make any money. Uh, They're brick and mortar. The reality is they're not going to You don't go in there to buy Fortnite. You're not, you're not going to buy those big games. It's it's a retail store where you're buying console games, and that's kind of going by the wayside. People still play them, but not like – it's kind of – think of Blockbuster. Not as outdated, but kind of. They've done the opposite. These, 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 these guys and gals have taken their money and pooling it together have essentially created their own – fund to fight them think godzilla versus uh king kong getting ready to come out so they're buying what ends up happening well if i've bought sold a stock at say five dollars and now it's up to ten dollars i'm having to pay that five bucks oh my god so i'm throwing more money at it because i'm wanting to sell more i've got to borrow more and sell more i'm losing money and that continues to happen. And it was a it's a giant game of chicken. Who can hold out the longest? Then the media picks up. And by the way, the, the, the you go and look at the 
the CNBCs and the and all the the Fox business and everything, they're all freaking out. Oh my God, how can this happen? Because their buddies are getting their asses handed to them. Melvin Capital lost two point seven five billion dollars being short of this. Two point seven five billion. Fifteen percent they're down this year based on on this and then the other question is is it legal is this legal average people at home yeah. thinking about investing in this what what should they do power of the individual to almost take down down a huge hedge fund you know is that manipulation of a stock this is not about the fundamentals of the company at all this is about exciting people and pushing the stock up almost as a game in a way uh, so I, I think that regulators will for sure take a look at this dear small investor though you should not be buying buying a stock because it's up 600 percent three days that's a very bad bad uh, investment idea yeah the early mover guys and gals are going to get out they're going to make a ton of money some people have made a million dollars uh some people have made you know uh, not one person said i've made enough to pay off in three days to pay off my student debt so but like last night my uncle's like should i get in this i said no i said first of all it's made its move secondly eventually people are going to dump the stock because they're going to want to take their profits and then it's going to collapse don't be surprised if hedge funds and stuff get back in here because they realize at this point in time this stock is completely overvalued plus eventually as we know because of the internet we have a short attention span and the powers that be who follow Wall Street bet are going to say, well, you know, we're going to move on to something else. They're moving on to BlackBerry, uh, you know, AMC, the movie chain. So don't chase the chaos and craziness. But it's a great way for 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 a lot of people to learn two things. First, little guy has the power now, just as much as the big guy, when they pool it together. One person's not going to move a stock like this, but a group coming together because the Internet can. And that, to me, is great. The second thing is you start to realize how the game is played inside of the stock market, how stuff can be manipulated, how stuff can be twisted, how guys and gals can get in there. And a lot of it is done in such a way where, you know, it's it, you're just like, wow, that's how wasn't that hard. You're just buying some stuff and you're borrowing stuff and you're selling stuff. And and it's really not. Yeah. And it kind of pulls the veil back. And when they've got to go up against somebody, you can see what ends up happening. And who right now has lasted longer? Well, so far, the win to David. I do think eventually Goliath will get his due because it's not a $351 stock. They're closing a bunch of stores. They're not going to be profitable for two years. The good news is they brought in the guy that's the co-founder of Chewy, put him on the board, and 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 people say short sellers are evil. Well, a lot of times short sellers will take that money, revest it in parts of that company because they believe in it after they've made their money. But you also show you they can drive the stock down, buy it at a much cheaper level and profit on the way up. Is it worth thirty dollars, forty dollars, fifty? I don't know, but I don't think it's worth three hundred and fifty. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program, love hearing from every single one of you. Again, it's about getting ourselves out there, getting back to school, getting back to life, getting our lives back. And the vaccine is going to be a huge part of that. But we do need kids back in school. And I think the biggest thing about all of this when it comes to our kids and school, because as we talk about video games, I know Jack... I mean, at this point, he should be a professional. I'm like, you should be a pro by now with with this stuff. You know, that's all he does when he's not. You know, we're, well, you know, we're talking there. And I was like, what am I going to do, Dad? First of all, it's raining all day, right? And for the last several days. Secondly, he goes, okay, we can't go anywhere. I mean, now they're opening things up, but you know, everybody's terrified as far as like, well, can I allow people to come into my store? Can can kids get together, but they can't get together? You know, because Gavin Newsom, in California, just threw out this wacky hey we're reopening so he plays a tons of video games but it has been stressful and you know the thought of going back to school is is great because even his mom's like he needs to be in school just needs to be in school once that starts to happen i think that'll be the biggest indicator of us getting back to to doing things again will be school is it going to be this year Maybe for some it has been off and on, but I think for sure no reason next year it shouldn't be, and maybe even summer school 
But what does that look like? Are we going to still have the masking world? It can reduce the air pockets that would allow for transmission events to take place. So this double masking, I know it's starting to sound a little bit like we're moving the goalpost, but it's really important if we want to drive transmission down and avoid having these new variants take over our communities. I think it's a great idea. No. And especially for schools. Look, you can't get a barely can get a kid to wear one mask. Asking them to wear two masks is ridiculous. You're not going to get that from the little kids. You know that. I mean, what are they already saying? Like, you know, up to like seven or eight years old. First, first couple of grades. You're not. To, maybe fourth grade. You might be able to get away with it. The mask. Maybe. But that's why schools, as far as the teachers and stuff, that's why you take care of those areas. And at times, you just let the kids be the kids. It's like Michael Jordan, right? Like, as you talk about it, how do you stop Michael Jordan? You don't. You try to stop everybody else. How do you stop the coronavirus with the kids? You don't. You let the kids be the kids. You do the things that you do will help us get there. And then, of course, the vaccines. And as soon as AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson come here, those will be the game changers. It's still going to take a while because Johnson & Johnson said even if they were today given the green light, they don't have enough supply to to get it out the way that we need it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program, love hearing from all of you. Guess what? Americans are fatter than, and and, and quite frankly, it's all humans, but I don't think this is a fair assessment of said critter. Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio, medium rare and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. Are you fatter than an elephant? According to a new study, uh, most humans are fatter than an elephant. And they carry less body fat. Yeah, but And I was looking at this, and I'm like, well, how would I know if I'm fatter than an elephant? Is that elephant fat? They all look the same. Yes, there are some that have been abused. And, you know, and then you've got different kinds of elephants, right? Like you, you've, you you know, the, you have the Asian elephant, you have it, you have just different kinds of elephants. So how would I know which one's fat or not? Because not every elephant's the same, but they all kind of look the same. You fatter than a rhino? I don't know. What's a rhino supposed to look like? They've always looked the same to me. But then they did this thing where they dove deeper down. And essentially, yeah, they've got less body fat than the average human males about eight and a half percent females around 10 comparisoners researchers said the average human carries between six and 31 percent body fat fat in female elephants range from two to 25 percent i think it depends on uh like time of year uh, because in some ways it has to do with what they're eating and consuming as far as are they going to reproduce, stuff like that. It's crazy. But it's like saying, are you fat as a shark? I don't know. Shark swims all day. I don't swim all day. But how would I know what a fat shark looks like? How do I? I've my Now, what I do know is my lizards are fat. I got a couple lizards that have uh, kind of fat. <laughs> I could tell. It's a little big. A little big. But elephants, I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, I don't know. And the reason they started doing this is they're wondering, is they're not reproducing because is it because they're obese? Because they can go into almost a diabetic like state. So very interesting. But it's not. I don't think it's a fair comparison. It makes you go, oh, my God, are we that fat as people? Yeah, of course we know that. Right. You get older, too. It's tougher to take weight off. Yeah, we, we all understand that. But are we fat as elephants? I don't know. I don't know because I don't know what a fat elephant looks like because it just looks like an elephant. 323-538-2423. Three, three, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. So are you guys prepared? Because apparently there's supposed to be some rioting and some stuff. It could happen at the cat and it, the capitals around the country, but now they're looking for terror when it comes to, I guess, right wing, white supremacy. I don't even think it's white because not all of them are white, right? Like some of the groups have different 
ethnicities in it. But I like when they talked about this terror thing. There was nothing really specific about it. It was just something can happen. Remember after 9-11, we always got those, like, it was orange. Today's orange. Is orange bad? I don't know. It's orange. What, what is it tomorrow? Could be green. Was green bad? I don't know. Green's usually good. Could be awful now, though. Could be they're going forward with it. Oh, wow. That's crazy. It's purple. We don't have that. Would it be? So if they were to do this one, because it's on the right and it's mostly white people, would it just go, it would start out beige, then it would be a little off-white, and then it would be, like, bright white. Is that the way they would do that one? It's the new the new way to do uh, the color scheme when we're looking at terror. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Let me know if you feel like you're fatter than an elephant. You're not. Because if you are, that's you have a problem. If you get on your scale... And your scale no longer has, it just has pictures of things that you weigh as much as. That would be scary, right? Like you weigh as much as 28 bricks or giant cinder blocks. And then it starts like, you weigh as much as a, as a mantee. You're like, oh my God, I, I have to get help. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Check out Chad Benson Show TV as well as the Facebook on the old Facebook. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Even if you've had infection before, we would still recommend a vaccine. We're asking people to wait 90 days from the time that they were infected. We don't know a lot about the long-term immunity um, of this disease, so we are still recommending it. As I think about herd immunity and how many people we need to be vaccinated, we need to get an awful lot of people vaccinated. Think about this variant from the UK Mm. where there may be increased transmissibility. We might need more herd immunity than we really thought. In my mind, everybody should be rolling up their sleeves. Leave. Yeah. I mean, there's what people are talking about. Talking about, hey, when are we going to get back to it? Well, we've got this vaccine. That's fantastic. Why can't I get the vaccine? Oh, because of the, you know, it's taken, it's the manufacturing and you know, Trump didn't do the job that he probably should have done. Uh, and at the same time, you know, you've got the production and so many vaccines and it's got to be held in a special well what what's the deal like why aren't we getting there it's gonna take time dr todd ellerin talking about said time there's a marathon and there's a sprint the marathon is vaccinating enough people to reach herd immunity but the sprint is to get those numbers down yeah and get those numbers down but part of the thing is, is it, the community spread is such that getting those numbers down the way that people think that it's going to come down, uh, just even through vac, it's just not going to happen. It isn't. So we're at a point now where you do your best, you, you social distance, whatever it is you feel comfortable with, and then you wait to get your shot. When you get your shot, if you want to take it, if you don't want it, I had a lady send me a letter yesterday. Now I'm going to say this: very nice lady, older lady, I'm assuming. Uh, producer Phil, you will enjoy this. Uh, she uh, she doesn't have a computer, a, a cell phone, or anything. So she sent me a regular letter, and then she went through all why she she went through, knocked down the reasons of all the things she takes. Right, so she takes this, you know, like vitamin A and B and omegas, and she and then a bunch of other stuff. Like you know, she's like stuff. I'm like, wow, sounds like maybe maybe she's a witch. I don't know. It's like toad. You take toad. But then she said she will not get the vaccine. And she says in there, and this is what's crazy, alter your DNA, it's the sign of the devil, and you'll be chipped. I don't, that's tough, 
right? And that goes back to our, our what if we don't get enough people to reach that kind of herd immunity? What do we do? And this is where Biden is going to have to, like, we know what Trump would have said. You need to get out there and live your life. I've said since day one, we're going to have to learn to live with this thing, through this thing, and around this thing. You know, everybody got on Sweden. Well, their numbers were bad. They were much worse. And they even said, Sweden always said, look, we're all going to kind of end up at the same place. And a perfect example is places that locked up big time, see California. Other places who didn't lock up ended up in the same place. Why? Well, because it's that's just nature. It's part of it. This thing is moved in such ways. And eventually people always, as human beings, say, I've had enough. I'm not staying inside anymore. I'm not wearing two masks. I'm not wearing four masks. You've told me it was going to take two weeks, and it was a month. Next thing you know, we're 11 months into this thing, and good God, we've lost so much, not just people, but we've lost businesses. We have lost a year of our kids and their their growth and education. We've lost a ton of stuff, and you're still trying to figure things out. Well, maybe we should wear two masks. Should I get vaccinated? I had it. Yeah, get vaccinated. Get vaccinated double twice. Well, uh, then what? Well, then still wear a mask. Why? Because maybe you could give it to somebody. I don't know. People ask, why should I even have to wear a mask after I get my second shot? And the reason is you could conceivably get infected, get no symptoms, and still have virus in your nasopharynx, which means that you would have to wear a mask to prevent you from infecting someone else, as well as the other side of the coin, where you may not be totally protected yourself. So getting vaccinated does not say now I have a free pass to travel, nor does it say that I have a free pass to put aside all of the public health measures that we talk about all the mm. time. Dr. Fauci. I just, I can't wait to not wear a mask. I can't wait to walk close to a store after parking in the parking lot far away, because I like to do that, get my steps in, and get all the way to the door and then say, ah, oh, blank, I forgot my mask. And I do say blank and I say it loud. And you got to turn around. Well, I can't wait to not have to do that. Or to have people look at you not wearing a mask. I'm outdoors. Leave me alone. So frustration, yes. Absolutely. We're going to get there. Part of that, though, even when we get there, and this is where I keep harping on our supposed leaders in this country, is the fact that we're going to get there partially through vaccination partially because it spread to a point where we didn't realize and people have antibodies, but it's going to be endemic. And people are going to have to learn to live with this thing, through this thing, and around this thing. Because if we get to a point where we're back to some normalcy, right, where where life's normal, come the beginning of fall, and then, lo and behold, by Christmas, they're like, oh, we got to shut things down again, you're going to get hell and then some from people, and they won't listen. And you saw that in California. Recall of Gavin Newsom got to the point where he had no choice but to open, but after several months of his absolute incompetence, people finally said I'd had enough. I was talking to my mom the other day. I said, what's Hunter doing? She passed, you know, she went to school. She's she's a, she's a, she's an esthetician, and she's, a, you know, she's all the hair. She does everything. And it took her like three and a half years because there you have to be a barber. She did that. She also, for, for regular, you know, styling, she did that. And the whole thing. And I was talking to her and she goes, oh, she's working four days a week at a salon. They're not supposed to be open, but nobody cares anymore. That's what's going to happen. So be honest with the people and give them the choice rather than trying to scare them into submission, which seemed to be a lot of what took place. Just be honest. Let me make the choice for myself. And if somebody else makes a different choice, that's fine. But we've got to get to the point where we stop protecting the stupid. Which is what we tend to do, whether it's on the Internet or elsewhere. We tend to protect the weakest link 
in ways that we probably shouldn't. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Then you've got the economy. All of that being said, how'd we do? The U.S. economy grew at a 4% annual rate in the final three months of 2020, but shrank overall last year by the largest amount since World War II. The pandemic plunged the country into a recession and left tens of millions of Americans unemployed. Another 847,000 workers filed new claims for unemployment benefits for the first time last week. So, not great. The end of the year when all is said and done and they look everything up, I don't think it was a great year, especially those three months in the second quarter that were absolutely brutal. Who doesn't want to get back to their normal life? And for some people, they've profited and done well through the pandemic. I'm, you know, I'm very blessed, I, I, you know, but I work hard. I do a lot of different things and, and I have. You know, I I do a ton of stuff. I'm always working. I'm up early. I go to bed late and I bust my butt and I've been very blessed. But I kind of live my life before this, you know, because I'm naturally a social distancer. I've had a couple of friends who've done really, really well. And I've had a couple of friends who've lost a ton of stuff. But all of them say the same thing. Take even the, the, the financial side out of it. It's the thing you're missing. For me, it's movies. I've talked about that. But so many of us have that thing that we're missing that is human interaction, sports, going to a game, playing a game, whatever it is. That's part of the psychological aspect of this that we need to get back to. And that so many people, one of the reasons I think we saw such a boom or a spike in what took place with the coronavirus is because we got to the end of the year. And people said, blank it. Screw it. Bleep it. I'm going to go see my family. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I can't do this anymore. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. The craziness, the chaos, the lunacy is happening with old... uh, Now it's AMC... Uh, that has become the new GameStop, and now they have, Robinhood has restricted transactions for GameStop and AMC. So if you've not been following the story, it's the little guy versus the big group, right? I know. What did you say, little guy? Well, it's the little non-gender specific individual versus the evil, bad white guy on Wall Street. And... GameStop, their stock has gone through the roof. It's costing hedge funds billions of dollars. There's a battle going on off of essentially a Reddit group that is taking on all of these hedge funds and what they're doing. And all of a sudden today, Robinhood has stopped people from purchasing shares they said in light of recent volatility we are restricting transactions for certain securities to position closing only including amc bb i think that uh, i don't know what that is uh, bed bath and beyond blackberry costs and a few others and they said they're also raising margin requirements for certain securities because certain things there's a margin you have to pay it's it's crazy But they're coming, you know, this is the battle, right? And this is where you're going to see how these machines and engines work in the world of capitalism and how stuff can be manipulated. But also how through capitalism, things like Robin Hood, how the little person can get in there and fight their ass off when doing it right to take people on. And this right here, I'm going to say it, it's a pissing contest between people who understand the marketplace and got a group of people to essentially put a fund together to go up against another hedge fund. So think of it as a bunch of ants coming together, but they're coming together to form a giant ant to take on its what they see as, you know, an enemy, if you will. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. AMAC, Association of Mature American Citizens, fastest growing over 50 organization in the country. Whether you need help with Social Security, maybe 
you're not 65. You don't need Medicare, but you do need health insurance. Uh, they've got a thousand plans and people they could send you to to help out with. Maybe you're not sure if you should or shouldn't take Social Security. They can walk you through the steps. On top of that, they got retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, discounts for travel, discounts for insurance, I mean, discounts for restaurants, amusement parks, you name it, they've got it. You can join today. It's less than 20 bucks a year. I think it's 16 bucks. It's super simple to join. And it is worth its weight in gold. And right now it kind of sucks because we can't do as much, but you can still take advantage of all the other things. And we're going to open soon. So why not take advantage of going to things like movies at 50% off? Go to amac.us forward slash chat. That's amac.us forward slash chat. amac.us forward slash chat. Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. Five, seven, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let's take a look and see what's trending around the old interwebs. We'll fart first and foremost, maybe on the Twitter. Uh, Robin Hood, we were just talking about. Talking about Robin Hood suspending trading of GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, Nokia, and other securities after they've seen massive gains in certain things like GameStop, overinflated. When this thing started, this craziness, not heard. Essentially, the little guy taking on the big guy. Hedge funds versus... And so what's happening is these things are overinflated. And so they've stopped trading because people are jumping in out of emotion, thinking they're doing something. And so they've stopped the trading of of these. Also trending is do not sell. People are calling on one another to hold the line and avoid selling any of the heavily shorted stocks that were restricted today by Robinhood. So this is going to be interesting to see the, the, the way that this thing plays itself out. I'm going to... Tell you the way I think it's going to play itself out in a little bit. And it's going to, you know, I think it's going to be ugly for, for, for a decent amount of people. Head on over to Google. GameStop stock yesterday. Most widely searched thing. 10 million people viewed it. Cloris Leachman's death. Also her life. Oscar winner. Eight-time Emmy winner. Her and Julie Louis-Dreyfus. I think she has eight as well, are the two that have won the most Emmys. And that, I mean, think about it. That's, that's insane. We don't think of Cloris Lee. She, she was a comedic actor. Marjorie Taylor Green, a majority, I don't even know how to say her name. Let's call her Taylor Green. Apparently, uh, the deeper people dig, which apparently isn't very hard, she confronted a uh, Parkland shooter. Essentially, staying was like a false flag operation, or they were they were a crisis. Act. I don't. I. Wow, you better clean it up, Republicans. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You better figure it out. And Dan Hayhurst, who's that? So you remember Pamela Anderson was hot and heavy for a while with uh, uh, Julian Assange, but during the pandemic. She was basically stuck with her uh, bodyguard, and they fell in love and got married. (laughs) So Dan Hayhurst is now really protecting Pamela Anderson, her well-being, and her body. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, check it all out. More on the craziness of the little... Non-gender specific individual taking on the evil hedge funds. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. As we get into February, March, and April, we're going to see an escalation of availability of doses that we may not have had a week or two or three ago. Yeah, that right there, Dr. Fauci talking about said coronavirus not going anywhere. So uh, vaccines of utmost importance. If you are young, healthy, and by young, I mean, you're under 65, you're in pretty good shape. You're not really worried. Like, yeah, you you don't want to get it because who wants to get sick? You always have to say, you don't want to get it. Well, I didn't like, you don't want to get a cold. I mean, but you're going to be fine. You know, the chance of you surviving this are 99.9% if you're healthy adult, even under 65, even over 65 with, with comorbidities, the chance of surviving are, it's not like you're, oh, you got it, you're dead. No, a majority, a vast majority would survive. But to get to the point where we see the spread stop, it's going to take multiple vaccines for multiple companies. And the two that people say are the game changers, AstraZeneca, and there's a battle going on with, so the UK has approved AstraZeneca. They're like, we're doing this. The EU has not. Remember, the, the, the Brits have left. They've bounced the EU. They're like, we're out, and we're doing our own thing. So they've approved AstraZeneca. On the other side of things, don't know where we stand with AstraZeneca. But Johnson & Johnson, I think probably by the end of next week, will be ready to put themselves in position where they're going to get in front of the FDA. And why they're a game changer is two. One, it's a one shot. Two, very important here. Want everybody to understand this? Two. It can be refrigerated in a regular, like you could have a, your ham sandwich in there and it next to it. It doesn't need some special, it's got to be 93.8 degrees below zero and otherwise, no, it can be, it's fine. That's the, the beauty of that one. That's why it's a game changer. And the reason is simple. Now, instead of going on some wacky website where you takes an hour to fill something out or going through the rigor and roar of like, hold on a second, I can get a shot over here if you're over 65, but if you're under 65 with comorbidities, you have to go here. If you're over 75, you can go to both places. It's You don't have to worry about that. You can call your doctor because your doctor will be able to have it and give it to you. You can go to Walgreens or CVS. That's why it's a game changer. It opens it up, but it is going to take a while because they don't have enough supply at this moment. And the ramp up is going to take a bit. That's why, realistically, May, June, July, it's kind of always been my summertime. We're going to have, I bet, 85% of the country is going to be in a normal way of life. You're still going to find some places that are not doing well. And you're also going to find that some states may keep on certain elements of what they have going on right now with the mitigation factors, maybe wearing a mask or or limiting sizes. But I think a lot of states are just going to be like, the minute we're at that point, it's on and we're going to go from there. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Chaos, craziness. What is it? It's GameStop. It is the young... Guns, as some people are calling them. The young speculators inspired by a community on Reddit called Wall Street Bets, followed by over 4 million readers. Post to Wall Street Bets recently exposed a serious exploitable vulnerability in GameStop stock. A number of influential Wall Street investors were heavily shorting it, which meant they were betting the stock would crash. As it turns out, the Wall Street titans were wrong. Very wrong. Well... Because they were able to go up and buy up the stock and shoot the price up. Robinhood today suspended their services as far as these stocks, securities you can buy, uh, BlackBerry, Bed Bath Beyond, AMC, uh, Nokia, and GameStop as they look into what's going on. So I'll give you a quick little just synopsis of how this thing works. You borrow a stock from somebody. You don't buy it, you borrow it. You borrow a stock and say, hey, you guys got X amount of stocks. We'd like to borrow some as a hedge fund, and we're going to sell this stock. So they go out and they sell a stock at a certain price. 
their bet is based on the fundamentals they're looking at. You guys don't have any real opportunity to have profit. And we believe that over the coming next X amount of months or year, your price is going to go from $10 down to $5. Once it gets to $5, we think that's a where you really belong. We're going to then buy the stock back and the difference between the two is what we make. And it's called short selling. Reddit has a community that is called Wall Street Bets, WSB. Great station, Atlanta, Georgia as well. But WSB has about two and a half million followers, and it started out as kind of people sharing memes, talking about and stuff, giving trader tips. But like a lot of these things, inside of these communities, you kind of have some leaders and big stars, and they started noticing things. Some of these guys who I have a feeling we're going to find out, some of these big movers that are inside of here are also guys that are were in the business or are still in the business. Don't be surprised about that. Do not be surprised that we find out there are people that are behind this that know more than just, hey, I'm the average guy sitting on a you know my recliner at home because I'm unemployed. Don't be surprised. So they got a lot of people to pump money into it. They talked about stuff and said, let's let's kind of, in a way, take on these hedge funds. And like a people's army, they've done that. And they drove the stock from $20 at the beginning of the year to well over 300 plus with wild swings. And they're able to do that because retail investors, you, me, everybody, we have access to a thing called Robinhood, and there's Acorns and a bunch of other places And you can now invest at your fingertips. And away you go. And you have access to things that, when I was a trader, we didn't have a lot of access to stuff. We didn't. So when I had my brokerage firm, we had access, more access than the average person, but it wasn't like it is now. The average person can have everything at their fingertips. Cost extra money to get this. If you want these charts, you want, now don't have to worry about it. It's about volume for them. Well, here we go. And I don't know how this is going to play out. And you've got the Securities Exchange Commission you're looking at. You've got the president yesterday. Even Jen Psaki says, yes, we are monitoring the situation. And this is where the battle's going to come in between the evil Wall Street people looking like they're getting their asses kicked and they want, you know, somebody to step in and stop this. But there's more to it than just that. Of course, you have the big Wall Street titans who've now lost billions of dollars who are saying, wait a minute, this this angry mob can't just come at us without any issue. So the SEC says it's working to assess the situation and review the activities of the regulated entities, financial intermediaries and other market participants. Mm -hmm. They're aware of the volatility. They're aware of what's going on. I mean, how can you not be at this point? But they're going to take a closer look. And it's anyone's guess what will come of this. Yeah. And let me tell you what ends up happening in a lot of situations like this. So many people want to get into this thing. They see it now. They want to participate. They jump on it. This this isn't real. It isn't. It shows you, yes, how easy things can be manipulated. But there's also a bit of an art form and there's also a bit of understanding. When I first got into the commodities industry, it is nothing like you train for because in reality it's full contact. And there were certain marketplaces after a while, you're like, you don't invest in that. You don't. And being on the floor when I was at the Chicago American and in New York and stuff, some of the stuff, you would watch the way that guys would take advantage of retail traders. Because you knew. They would, they, they would share things with each other through a wink and a nod, and, and there's just some things you watch out for. Because they can control price and do certain things. And This is who ends up getting hurt a lot of times is people that are looking for that quick run of something and they chase it because it's all based on emotion. And we talk about it here all the time. What's the greatest sales book in the world? Psychology book. How can I evoke an emotion out of you? Is it love? Is it greed? Is it fear? What's that thing that I need to find in you that I could trigger and will get you going? People are jumping on the stock now because they think they're going to 
if they don't, it's going to be too late. And they already missed Bitcoin and they already missed this and they already missed that. They're late to the game. And eventually other big money will come here and they'll throw so much at it because it is so oversold and retail investors aren't smart enough to understand that. By that, I mean just the average person who looks at this, sees it on the news and says, well, I got to get that. And then it goes from 360 and it drops all the way down and people lose everything. It's it's scary and you've got to be cautious. And there's two there's two things you do. You invest, that's long term. You trade, that's income opportunities and people who are out there looking to do something on a daily basis. But most people are going to jump in this thing at this point and you watch what happens. Cuz you know what? If I'm those big hedge funds, like Melvin Capital, they lost 2.75 billion. They're down 15%. They were shorting it at like twenty dollars, then at like fifty. They shorted at three hundred, and it drops down to twenty dollars. That money they lost, they'll make up in a heartbeat, and more money will come behind it. That's why the oh, the little guys getting over. We have to stop Robin Hood from trading. No, it's do we need to protect some of these people who are going to lose a bunch? I I had to talk my uncle out of buying it last night. I'm like, dude, don't do it. Don't chase something. The moves happened. The people that are early into this, who put in a thousand bucks and bought a bunch of little bit of stock here and there, and then added to it as they went, that's fine. But eventually, even the average retail investor is going to want to get out. And then think about the people who are on the board and they've got options. It's you got to be careful. You do. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show. Your Twitter, tweet at us. Text the program. Talk a little climate change. It's interesting. You know, it's it's another one of those, do people really care? It's like impeachment. We'll talk about that too. How much do they care? Because like we all like if you ask me certain things, like, boy, yeah, people always care. But do they care because you ask, or is it top of mind? Touch on that straight ahead, Chad Benson Show. Reverence? Um, like, yeah. So what? It's the Chad Benson Show. Another thing that Biden's climate advisors were emphasizing is that this is not about investment in, you know, green energy technology companies in Silicon Valley or in New York City. This is about finding ways to entice companies, prompt companies, do government infrastructure projects on green energy that are in communities that have been hit by parts of the energy industry. So Appalachia, where there is coal miners who don't have jobs anymore, anywhere in the country where these people are concerned that they might lose jobs, that's where the Biden administration says they want to be making these investments. You know, and you got John Kerry, who he is a bit tone deaf coming out, you know, and, and, you know, Look, the right's using this because, okay, you've gotten rid of, let's be honest about the, the, the pipeline, the Keystone pipeline. It was still being litigated, litigated. Everybody knew it was coming. The Canadians are uber pissed. Oh, for sure. You know, it's tough. We needed that stuff there, eh? Uh, at the end of the day, how many permanent jobs? It didn't lose 11,000 jobs. There's only about a thousand people, I think, working on it at the time, if that. Now, to me, I look at that and I say, all right, well, where's the reality? Why can't we do this? Where, where, because, well, we, we can't because we want to get off. We went green. You're going through property. You're going through it. We're, we're not going to drill places here. It's about being smart, right? We all want clean water and clean land. We do. It shouldn't be this battle of what we want, don't want. We should, we should have tried to move on from fossil fuels years ago. They've got a huge lobby. It was easy. The money-making machine was being, you know, was printing money. And so you don't do that. And not move off of it. I mean, to me, I look at it as like, okay, where can I invest in the smart side of things, money side of things, as well as this is good for us. But you've got to do it in the right way. And to think that, oh, you're an out-of-work coal miner, so automatically you're going to be able to build solar panels 
or code is is stupid. It's not going to happen. It isn't. And part of that goes back to this whole $15 an hour, buy American. All that sounds great. It does, until it affects you. What do you mean affects me? Well, it all sounds great until you've got to pay a lot more for your iPhone. It all sounds great until you have to pay a lot more for this over here. And while you see people getting a raise in certain areas as a good thing, it disproportionately hurts who? The poor and the people who lack skills. Because if I'm a business owner in a situation like this, I mean, I'm blessed. My 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 other businesses, you know, that, that we have, we don't pay anybody 15 hours. They make they can make more money than that, and we're blessed to be able to do that. But if if it was one of those things where I would just say, well, let me outsource this even more. Let me outsource that more as much as I possibly can. And the people that we will keep, we're just going to keep the best of them and then have less of them. It all sounds great. It's like, you know, climate change all sounds great. Like, oh, my God, yeah. But when it comes to to that, what are you willing to pay and give up? Are you willing to pay more? Some people say, yeah. But to think that somebody who's in the inner city who's trying to figure out how they're, you know, why aren't the kids in school? Well, because of what's going on. You got the unions fighting them. and the, ah, We're not coming back to school until everybody's vaccinated. And this thing doesn't exist. Then you're trying to figure out how you're still maintaining your two jobs. Putting food on the table. You're not thinking about climate change. You're not. And for them to do something that may all of a sudden seem really good. But then take your electricity bill from, you know, 50 bucks to 100 bucks over a year or so. Who's that hurt more? A guy that makes 500 grand a year or somebody who makes 35 grand a year? It's the little it's doing it in increments that work. And that's the problem. Everybody wants to make sweeping changes. You've got to say, what's the let's cost average this with the people that we're going to affect. And let's also be realistic the coal miners probably, some of them may, and they'll welcome a chance to move on. But a good portion of them, you're not going to code, you're not building solar panels, because we'll build solar panels somewhere else, cheaper. And take away, even, even if you could build solar panels, now with all the rules and regulations you're putting in, it's making it even more expensive to build. And now you look up and you think, well, why would I want solar for my house when it's going to cost me more than I pay for my electricity because of how expensive it is to buy it. How do you do it in a right and smart way? That's the big question. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It will be months before everyone who wants a vaccine will be able to get one. What? Do you want a vaccine? You know, that's a very real question. Do you want a vaccine? Yesterday, a new poll came out and says more people now are, are apt to get the vaccine than previously because i think they've looked and they said all right in the uk nobody's exploded the people around the world that are using it and then some people like well there's a guy that died over here let's let's remember people die from aspirin we talked about yesterday Two hundred thousand people a year die from snails so this is uh, well this is brand new it's not brand new this technology has been around forever in a day but it is going to take a while and while Pfizer and Moderna were first on the scene, they had first mover advantage, they have a disadvantage. And that huge disadvantage is the fact that it takes a lot 
to store. Johnson & Johnson will be the one that will be the game changer in this, and maybe a few others behind it, maybe AstraZeneca, because of the storage. It's not whether or not it's the most effective, because I, I think it's 70 to 80% effective, depending on what studies, but it's the storage that will get it to more people. As we get into February, March, and February. April, we're going to see an escalation of availability of doses that we may not have had a week or two or three ago. Yeah. And that's exactly what people want, because that brings you to a world of getting back to a normal way of life. You know, one of the things that we've you know seen across the country is so many states that have shut down, they shut down everything. People have gone underground to, to do everything from cut their hair to get tattoos. And it's just the opportunity to get back out there and live. And then, you know, Gavin Newsom opened up California. It's like, all right, you know what? I'm going to get recalled. That's what you guys are doing to me. Well, uh, based on no science, here we go. I'm opening stuff up. What are people doing? In much of California, barber shops and salons are open again for the first time in many weeks. Sierra Law owns Hook and Scissor in San Francisco. She says clients have come back in droves to get their hair cut. We already are pretty much booked for the next you know, week or so. But many restaurants, which can reopen outdoor dining in San Francisco today, are holding off because California is getting pounded by a powerful storm and outdoor dining and heavy rain don't mix. Yeah, that doesn't mix. But it's funny, right? Like, well, God, i got to get my hair cut. Well, you've been Zooming for the last several weeks or months. And you're looking at yourself and... Mm, I got to get out. I got to get a haircut. How many How many people switch to the Flovey? I'm just, I'm bald, so I don't, and I'm bald by choice. People ask me, oh, were you going bald? No, I'm bald by choice. I get up really early. It's easy for me to do. I shave my head probably two, three times a week, and I go, and I've got a razor, just like anything else, and I shave it, and I move on, because I wake up in the morning, and I go, and it's one less thing that I have to do, and I actually have a decent head, so it's great. But first thing people are doing, I need to get a haircut. I need it. I need it. Parts of feeling like you're normal again. And it's those little things, right? Going to see a movie. Having dinner at your favorite restaurant. Getting in a car and going into a place potentially without a mask. Oh, yes. And then, of course, schools. Schools, schools, schools. How do we get kids back in schools? Is it the double masking? Eh, there's got to be a way. We need to make it happen. We're thinking about better uh, masks like surgical masks or N95 masks if they're available. So, yes, we should be considering improving the quality of our masks. And if we can't, then this concept of double masking makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the concept uh, sounds great. Like, well, if you could, why not triple mask? Why not quadruple mask? That's just stupid. And getting kids to do that is ridiculous. I can't get my son to text me or call me back. You think I'm going to, he's going to wear a mask? He needs to be in school. And I get why the teachers are worried. And a lot of that has to do, I think, less with the students as far and more with the way that the rooms are cleaned. And I think that's a big thing that we need to look at as we get kids back out there. But kids need to be in school. I think in some parts of the country, they're not getting back to school till next year. I think in other parts of the country, it's been start, stop. But I think eventually in the next month or two, it'll finish the year out and summer school will resume and everything will be back to normal for kids at school next year. But still, it's a lost year for so many. And it's not just the school. It's so many other things. Having to take time off work to take care of your kids. Having to, what? Do math. You don't do math. I don't do math. I learned enough math to get through. I'm actually okay at math, but this is new math. This is a 45-minute word problem to get to 2 plus 2. <laughs> Jimmy has six apples. Sally has five apples. Roger likes, starts going off in some tangent, isn't it? likes trains. You're like, where's this going? And then it 
just goes all over the place, you know. Next thing you know, you're in some sort of bizarre story about wizards and and warlocks, and oh my God, there's a oh look at that over there. There's a there's a gargoyle. What I don't know. Well, there's a phoenix. It's rising from the ashes. And then we're back to so and so has six apples and such and such. And if you add them together, and that was critical thinking, and it, it's stupid. Parents don't want to do it, and it shows that they're struggling with it. So yes, time to get everybody back out there in a responsible way, and get through it. But if you're healthy, you're under 65, you're last in line. You're last in line. And you're going to be moving into that probably April when you have that chance to get out, March, April, to just go get it. And that's if you want to. And we still don't know how many people will get it. And how long it's going to last. That's the other thing. And I think I think they're just kind of going, well, we'll see. You know, like if it's six months from now, if it all wears off and everybody gets sick again, then we know. But let's just play it by ear. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. It is happening. It is the fat cats in Wall Street versus the young guns, the upstarts, the retail investors, the little mom and pop people who've got an extra couple bucks and want to get involved in something. And it all started because of Reddit, and now it's become the story of the day. GameStop, Wall Street bets, hedge funds, what? In the last couple of weeks, we start to see people who are getting ideas on Wall Street bets start buying shares of GameStop. And they're sending the price up over the last three weeks by more than 16,000%. Keep in mind, this is a company that was worth $4 a year ago. It is now worth almost $400. And in just the last couple of days, it's more than doubled. Now, we talked earlier. Retail investors get in, especially people chasing this thing. And there's a lot of people excited. Oh, we, we, we really kicked the hedge funds' butts. And I've been talking about it. You did early. It's overvalued, and they'll come back with money later on, and they'll bring other hedge fund investors, and they'll sell out this thing, and they'll short it. Today, it's down 200 bucks. So at one point today, it was up around 460 nine before trading, and then it has fallen off. They've stopped trading it because a lot of people out there got in it late, Some people have taken out money and done things, and that average investor is the one that's going to pay the price. And that's, oh, that's why it's a game for the rich. It, it's a game for the people who kind of educate themselves a little bit, have an understanding of it, but also, and I, uh, when I was a trader, you have to have zero emotions. It's like one of those things where you that like you're a hitman, where you just. I don't know if it's going up or going down. Whatever. Tomorrow will be different. But it's going to get thumped. It's going to happen. The 52-week low was $2.57. The 52-week high was $483. The market cap went to over $24 billion. It's probably a billion and a half dollar company. GameStop. Oh, this is a retail store to buy games. Like little trinkets and toys. That's where I got my Oculus. End of the day, the the fat cats will figure a way out. And the people who got in early, who understand what was going on, who I'm telling you guys, we're going to find out later on, there are some people in there that are doing stuff, who are manipulating the marketplace pri- and, and figuring things out in a smart way, who probably have a lot more to do with Wall Street than people want to realize. Either they were part of it or they're still part of it and they're playing another side and they go into these Reddit forums. Now, Producer Phil, have you been to any of these, any Reddit forum at all? Yes. Yes, I have. I'm sure you have. Uh, probably some weird ones and probably probably a train one, too. I'm sure there's uh, a train, train one. And train. I love I don't work here, lady. So. So, OK, so what's it like? Because I've, I, it's been forever since I've even what's it like in there? It's just a bunch of people making posts of, you know, Especially the stories of people who are mistaken for employees in stores, which are, are really great. Or malicious compliance, where you follow the rules to a T and everyone else gets in trouble. Oh, but but it's, okay. just, it's just a message board. 
So, so, so it's just like an old-fashioned message board. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, see? And so this Wall Street Bats has two million people plus, maybe two and a half. And they, they were going in there and pitching about, you know, the stock market, pitching about trading, uh, talking about their losses, you know, just, just doing all kinds of stuff. And, and posting a lot of funny memes. But there are also some smart people. And when you can get people to maneuver in such a way, kind of like QAnon, right? Q got people, and these people in Q got people to maneuver in a way to glom onto something, Trump, whatever it was at the time, because it could be a thousand different things. You, That's the influence. And so them getting in early at four, eight, ten dollars a share, understanding what's going on, because it was okay value, you weren't going to lose a ton, but if you knew that you could move people to do the same thing, tell a story, you get it to move, great, you've made a ton of money. But as the story blossomed and people realize you've got the 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 great Robin Hood, the the, the you know the democratizing of 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 trading right in front of you, and easy access. Then people started saying, oh, I want to be a part of this, and it's us versus them. At the end of the day, though, so many people are getting in at a much later date. They're the ones who are going to pay the price because as the market falls, they're not going to get out the way they want, and you watch what happens. It's a shark's world, and you've got to understand. It's not hard to understand. The problem is is you've got to understand your emotions. I told my uncle last night, he's like, I'm going to buy. I said, don't. Don't even touch it. It's made the move. Don't chase something you can't catch. It's a fool's errand. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Express VPN. Your data is yours. Social media companies, uh, you name it, search engines, they believe you and your data are theirs and they'd like to take it and do stuff with it. That's why you get a VPN, virtual private network. You hide yourself, essentially. Make everything hard for them to trace and sell by hiding your IP address. ExpressVPN is the best. They anonymize much of your online presence by hiding that address, which is great because tough for them to trace and sell to advertisers. Plus, they 100% encrypt your data, protect you from eavesdroppers on your network at ExpressVPN, and it gives you all kinds of things. You can essentially be anywhere in the world. You could watch Netflix. So I don't think people realize, like th- like Netflix, Netflix, Europe, I mean, England, it's, all of these are different. You can't watch it. Well, you can with this because it looks like you're there, so you're going to get the same programs they are. It is an amazing thing, and it's easy. One button, boom. You tap it, you are protected. Join now. Take back your privacy. Join with the VPN I trust. ExpressVPN. Go to expressvpn.com slash Benson. You visit my link. Extra three months of service for free on a one-year package. And here's the thing. Super cheap. I think it's like 16 to 22 cents a day, depending on what you choose. EXPRESSVPN.com slash Benson. ExpressVPN.com slash Benson. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. If you were betting at $4 a share that the company was going to $1 a share, and now the company's almost $400 a share, that is going to cost you billions of dollars. These companies, some of these hedge funds that have been around for years, been considered the smartest money on the street are now losing practically everything because this Reddit army has banded together, realized the vulnerability, and completely exploited it. Eat the rich. So GameStop taking a hit today. It was up, down. It's going to be all over the place. And they Robinhood has suspended trading. And you've seen some of these hedge funds who have taken a beating, but... There's also some that are getting in right now and have gotten in, and you watch what happens. Big money will figure out a way 
to work it. They'll figure out a way to adapt. Some people are taking the profits, but it is going to be a crazy situation over the next few days. And it was just smart people on the old interwebs on Reddit that that caused this chaos and craziness. But my fear, if there is any, is is the fact that there's a lot of people out there who who get excited and they chase something. And I was telling the guys, man, when I was a broker, I could always tell I was going to lose money because they were chasing things that they shouldn't be chasing. And they were always late to a move, and you're the last one in, and you lose the most because they let everything be about emotion, and they always worried. They always worried about stuff. And it's it's you're going to hear some ugly stories from this. But at the same time, you're going to find some people that made some money. And I think we're going to find out a little bit more about who's behind a lot of this stuff. And the influence you can have on the interwebs is tremendous for both good and bad. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Early in the pandemic, New York State ordered nursing homes to accept patients who had tested positive for coronavirus. A new report from the New York Attorney General's office said that may have put residents at increased risk of harm in some facilities. It also may have obscured the data. And the same report said the state undercounted the death toll in nursing homes by as much as 50 percent. The Attorney General's office also found a number of facilities failed to comply with infection control policies. So investigators are now going back to 20 nursing homes of particular concern. Yeah, so uh, how about that, right? Hi, Andrew Cuomo, who's been doing everything to block anybody looking into any of this stuff. You can get his book, though, if you want it. It's called American Crisis, Leadership Lessons. (laughs) Serious, can't make this up, guys. So he sold the book. American crisis. all Because remember, he was out there every day, right? Cuomo's out there every day. Just every single day. Just holding stuff. He's got, the, he's got the sign language person behind him. And stuff's going on. And he's out there with his group. And they're, they have got to do this. And it's all about, look at this. And look at all the stuff we're doing. All the while, this is going on. You found time to write a book. American crisis. Leadership lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. Should be called American Crisis, How to Kill a Bunch of Old People in One Fail Swoop. <laughs> what page is that on? <laughs> this feels like eugenics. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. We've got... To get ourselves open, I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. I think people have pushed through to the point where we're starting to see states open because they've had no choice. The people have finally spoken in the way that you had to, which is eventually you just ignore what the hell these people are saying because they don't know what they're saying. Case in point, California. But you look elsewhere. Don't try to control You know, I've always been in this where uh, maybe I've differentiated a lot from a lot of people and I got some of it wrong and I got some of it right is human beings are going to do what human beings do. So we could sit here all day and pontificate about if we did this or if we did that and there's no Monday morning quarterbacking kind of things. What if you tried this and, you know, now we should wear two of these masks. And what about at the end of the day, you're in charge of you. You're responsible for you. So you do you. That's the way it should be. Well, Chad, but you could spread it. You could spread it. But you've got to be able to allow people 
to live. And yes, there is a huge, wide kind of swath and net that the through through you know the fact that this is a health crisis that they can do a lot of things that you know you look at and say, well, this is, this trumps a lot of stuff legally. But at the end of the day. As a governor and a leader, you get out there and we need to push more personal responsibility. Part of getting through this, letting people know, hey, you're uh, 50, 55, 60 years old, you're in good health. You're not going to be getting this thing for two, three, four months unless you're working in a certain industry. It's just the way it is. Live your life. Be responsible. Don't be an idiot. But we didn't. You know, we're just like, ah. And that caused chaos. Places like California. Adam Carolla talking to TMZ yesterday. And and, he, and so much of, you know, we've talked about the goalpost always moving. Nothing ever seems to be done scientifically. It seems to be done more about emotions and what sounds good to make people feel good. You have talked about moving, Adam. Uh, does this in any way assuage your anger uh, over all of the various restrictions now that it seems like California is semi-opening up again. No, it just makes it feel how random and arbitrary the first and initial restrictions were. I tell everyone I got to wait for my kids to get out of school and then I can move to Texas. But then I realize I'll just go down the hall, pack up some Lunchables. We'll get in the U-Haul and we'll go to Austin because they're not in school. It's insane that we're going on a year that my kids haven't been in school. Yeah, I think everybody feels that way. But we talk about personal responsibility all the time. You have to be personal responsible. One of the things I teach to, to my kids is be responsible. You make a mistake, you fess up to it. You're in charge of you. You're going to get opportunities in life, and there are going to be opportunities are great, and they're going to be a blessing. And you look at them like that, and you take responsibility for that. And with these opportunities comes that personal responsibility, no matter what it is. But... So much of what we see out there, especially with this and like climate change and so many other things, it's all based on certain kinds of control and in many cases, not even real science. You remember when they said, well, we're going to ban uh, trick-or-treating and then people threw a fit and then the next day, like, we're going to overturn. I'm like, we're going to let people trick-or-treat. I'm like, where was the science? There wasn't any. You just, this feels like something that's, that we should tell people not to do you know, wear masks, social distance, put all the things in place, open the salons, put the plexiglass up, do 25% occupancy, like do all the sensible things that make sense. Once you reach that threshold, then it's force majeure. I mean, it's a virus, it's nature, it's God, it's whatever you want to call it. Like we can't control everything. Producer Phil, you and I talk about it all the time. Let's remind everybody again, what will nature do? Nature will mess you up. Mess you up. Sometimes it is what it is. We have read how many stories since the beginning of this entire thing where didn't leave the house, didn't go anywhere, stayed at home, had food delivered, still got the coronavirus because it's nature. Part of fighting with the nature to is also getting out there and living and doing stuff and exposing yourself to some of these things, which will build up certain things. But I get that people were scared, but part of that is on the media. Trump didn't handle it well. Governors didn't handle it well. Some were just, eh, I don't care. Others were like, oh, my God, let's shut everything down. And when you looked at science, like shutting down restaurants, well, we're going to shut down eating outside. Well, why are you shutting down eating outside? Uh, because of uh, we have a report. You have a report that's nine months old based on indoor dining, not outside. Yeah, but we're still doing it. Why? Because it makes us all feel good. Personal responsibility. You know, if you're worried about getting this or giving it to somebody, you know, there's 50 people in this room. There's no way for us to spread out. You go in there, you know, eh, probably not the smartest thing to do if you're really worried about it. 
On the other side of things, if you don't believe it, that's fine, too. But that's where you also still have to take personal responsibility. It's like these people don't really believe it. I don't know if I really want to hang out with them right now just because I have a grandmother that's vulnerable or something like that. Or my my wife has comorbidities or I've got, you know, my little brother who's in a wheelchair. I just it's but we don't. Instead, the nanny states and people across, we're always trying to dictate things. And it's because we continue to protect so many people that, well, whether it's online, you know, like, oh, we better tell people that they can't post any more videos about the world being flat because because what? Well, because we need to protect them. Why? I think what we've learned is we are not in charge of every single aspect of humanity. We have to, you want to ride a motorcycle, put a helmet on. If you get clipped by a dump truck, I'm sorry, we can't control everything. So let's do the parts that make sense and then move forward safely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's that simple. Overregulated, over nannied, too much government, but most importantly, too much government that is not run well. You could, like, very say, I want small government. I was, yeah, I was, you know what I want? Competent government. Competent government will trump everything. And I'm not saying that because of Donald Trump. I'm just saying it, it does. If you have competent government, like good government, even if it's big, that's great. You have small government, it'd be useless. The problem is we have big government, overreach, and most of it's useless. And we've seen a lot of that. And I think this is going to be eye-opening in the coming months In years, and I don't know what kind of truth we're going to get out of a lot of this stuff. Because if you are states and federal governments that have overreached in many cases, and we found out eventually that this thing wasn't as the thing that they thought it was, how does that look? One thing you know is politicians never, never in a situation like that are going to go back and say, oops, they just don't. We started down this path. This is the path we're going on, and we're going to stick to it. But then they asked him about him. This is the great. This is great. They asked him about leaving California for Texas. Does it worry you that you're flirting with the idea of moving from your native state to somewhere you've never been before, and then three months in, you're going to say, oh, my God, what have I done? I mean, I guess everybody who leaves their old fat wife or supermodel has to flirt with the idea of maybe I won't be happy three months into having sex with this Victoria's Secret model. But I think it's a chance we're all willing to take, right? Don't you think most guys would take that chance? Yeah. Come on, you know you're laughing. You don't want to, but it's true. And the beauty of California is, well, it's California. The weather's great. It's fantastic. But it's run by... It's the old saying, we, people will fight like lions. Unfortunately, too often than not, we're led by donkeys. And Texas has it. I lived in Texas. I love Texas. But they have their issues as well. Like Every place has something. But it's which one has the least issues. It's like dating, right? Which one has the least issues? Which guy has the most upside with the least downside. Sometimes you get fooled. And other times you're like, oh, this is right. But I like how, the, uh, aren't you worried about, like Texas is still in America. It's not a foreign place. I've been to Austin a thousand times. But you're starting to get pushback in people in Texas as well who aren't thrilled by all the Californians coming out there because the fear is what? You guys did that to California. Now you're coming here and you're going to try to do it to Texas. And the whole reason you left is because you didn't like it. So don't bring it here. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from you. Chad Benson Show. If you like talk radio like Chad Benson likes his meals, you've come to the perfect place for takeout. The Internet is great. It's given us lots of cool things. 
But it also has given people opportunities to do things very sneakily and evil. Talk about it all the time. People ask me, does that really happen? When you talk about somebody stealing somebody's home, yeah, it does. Joining us now is Art Fitzenmeyer, Senior Advisor, Home Title Lock Corporation, uh, former FBI guy. So you, you get crime, Art, but the reality is is this is easier to do than stealing a car, and the profits are huge. It's a whole new level of crime, Chad. I just think that people are whistling past the graveyard if they don't pay attention to the digital age and how it can affect them personally because it can be really serious consequences. And home stealing is getting near the top of the list. Ironically, because it's so digital, the uh, level of reporting on the crime is somewhat suppressed uh, simply because it doesn't get reported to the police. And if they don't write it up as a crime, it doesn't make the FBI's uh, uniform crime report statistical analysis. So if someone steals your house, I have to tell you, you're pretty much on your own. So when you talk about stealing houses, and 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 for people who don't realize, it's over the last couple of years we've seen the the influx of uh, hackers going in and essentially taking over a hospital and all their computer, holding it for ransom, and they have to give money up. This is something kind of similar to that, which is. They go in and they take your title, they forge your signature, make it look like you got a, you know, uh, sold the house, quick claim deed to them, and then they're in control of it, but you never know about it until it's too late. And that's generally the case uh, in most of the instances. I mean, I, I kind of break this up, Chad, into three categories, the most insidious being the uh, cyber criminal who uses an assumed identity and uh, steals your title, forges it, and makes it look like, you know, they're the new owner of your house, uh, then they get loans and disappear. They're very hard to track, and once the money hits their account, they transfer it elsewhere, and it's gone. And you're really left with a problem because the person who uh, issued that mortgage is going to come knocking on your door at some point wanting the money or wanting to sell your house to get the money. And that's when your nightmare begins. It's a legal, financial, and emotional nightmare that usually will drag on for years and cost thousands of thousands of dollars. And even when it's all done, you may not like the results you get. First of all, it's going to cost you a lot of money. That type of loss is not covered by homeowners insurance or your bank or anything like that. So you're really on your own, have to fund it out of your own pocket. So just imagine the meter running for two or three years while you fight this in court. And what those numbers would be that you'd have to pay, you know, legal uh, advisors for. So you don't want to get down the, that road. No, and a lot of these people that do it, they're they're in, you know, they're in the, they're in the Ukraine, Eastern Europe, uh, elsewhere, and even trying to do any, you're you're fighting an uphill battle against somebody that's probably never going to appear in court. Absolutely. I mean, the the real issue here is immediate notice, and that's what Home Title Lock does. We have a very powerful proprietary software package that actually watches the titles of all of our subscribers 24-7. And if anything, anything touches them, I mean, it's really sensitive. You change commas and periods sometimes, it'll, it'll issue a warning that your title has been, uh, uh, you know, touched in some fashion. And it'll, the software notifies you and us, and then the software lets us know if you've seen the email. And if not, we're going to start calling you and contacting you to make sure you are aware that something happened. Now, many times it's a construction lien or a home equity loan or something like that, and you know about it, it's not a problem. But if it isn't that and you don't know about it, then we help you solve it immediately. Which is great. Talking to Art Fitzmeyer, Senior Advisor, Home Title Lock uh, Corporation, former uh, FBI agent. we got about uh, 30 seconds here. Uh, this has happened more and more prevalently, and I don't think people realize that your information is out there for the world to see. And because we live in a data age, data is super valuable. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anybody thinks that they aren't exposed, the, you know, they're just kidding themselves and setting themselves up to be taken advantage of, to be defrauded in a number of different levels. But if, if they go after your home, your most important asset, you're in a real nightmare for a long time. 
Yeah, absolutely. Art Fitzmeyer, Senior Advisor, Home Title Lock. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Thanks. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Code Radio, if you guys want to go, HomeTitleLock.com. Sponsor. Good dude right there. It's crazy. I'm telling you guys, that data. We've been talking about all kinds of stuff today. GameStop, how Reddit. Just imagine what people can do. It's just about CYA and yourself. I do it with myself. Do it with you. You guys have a blessed day. We'll do it again tomorrow. I see Friday. Oh, my God. I see Friday. Night, night, Jack. Benson Show.